Okay, uh, good afternoon. So today we're going to be going over a lot of rules. And these rules are in respect to differentiating functions. Now, because this is not a standard calculus course, um, I'm not going to walk through the proofs of all of these rules. I'm just going to list them and then we're going to use them to solve some problems. Okay. And if we have time, we'll make it to the chain rule, which is probably the most important rule for you. Um, I don't know though, we'll see. But we're, we will at least be covering sections 2.2 and 2.3 as our uh, differentiation rules. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and start writing them down. And there's quite a few, so bear with me. So the derivative with respect to x of any constant is always zero. Now, this is not hard to prove, but if you think back to what the derivative is, is saying, it's, it's telling us the, the slope of the tangent line at a point in the graph of the function. A constant is just a horizontal line like this. The slope is always going to be zero everywhere. So that's why the derivative of the constant function is um, zero. But again, you can use the formal definition of the, the derivative to show that that is indeed zero always. Okay, so next, suppose that, so if n is a rational number, so a ratio, Then the derivative with respect to x of, let's say, um, x to the power n is equal to, um, let's say, uh, n times x to the power n minus 1. And last time we, sh we saw that, for example, the derivative of x squared was 2x, right? So this is just a generalized version of that. So if you take the derivative with respect to x of the function x to the power n, then um, this will be your resulting derivative. Okay. okay, now if f is a differentiable function, and c is a constant, then if we take the derivative with respect to x of a constant times a differentiable function, this is just going to be c times the derivative of that function. Okay. So you can, you can basically factor out constants from um, the derivatives. All right, so then we also have uh, the sum and difference of derivatives. So if, if f and g are differentiable functions in of x, and if you take the derivative with respect to x of f of x, sum or minus g of x, and this is just plus or minus the derivatives of those functions. So respectively, if it was sum, you would take the sum of the derivatives. If it was the difference, you would take the difference of the derivatives. Um, and then finally, two more. So the derivative with respect to x of the sine function of x, that's equal to cosine of x. And the derivative with respect to x of the cosine function of x is equal to negative sine of x. Okay, so these are the, the basic rules of differentiating differentiable functions. So maybe I should just pick out maybe 
an example, like, let me see. Like, for example, let's look at maybe the derivative of f of x equals to x squared plus 5 minus 3x minus 2 to the power minus 2. So, okay, we see that if we take the derivative of a sum or difference, so this is basically a sum or difference here, so we can just take the derivative of each of the pieces. So if I look at, um, so maybe f prime of x is equal to the derivative of the first piece, so that means derivative with respect to x, squared plus the derivative of the constant, 5, um, minus the derivative of this piece here. Okay, so basically you can just split this up into a bunch of little pieces and then apply these rules to find out the derivative of the original function. So the derivative of x squared, so we're looking at this rule here. So the derivative of x squared, so n is 2, right? So then it'd be 2 times x to the power of n minus 1. Right? Or in other words, 2 times x to the power of 1. And then for the second piece here, we have the derivative of a constant, which is just 0. And then here we have the derivative of this thing here, but we can just factor, not factor out, we can move the constant out in front and just evaluate the derivative of the inside. So this will be three times the derivative of x to the minus two. All right, so then we just keep on going. So we get a 2x and then minus three times the derivative of this. Well, again, we're applying this exponent rule here. So now n is negative two. So this is gonna be negative two times x to the power of minus two minus one, or in other words, minus three. All right, so then we have finally 2x, negative times a negative to positive. And then we have x to the power of negative 3, or in other words, um, like that. So here, this would be the derivative of that function. Any questions? And applying these rules. So again, it's important to remember what this is doing. This is a differentiable function. We take the derivative, we get another function. And wherever we evaluate this function tells us the slope of the line tangent to the curve generated by the original function. So you have to always remember that, that this function is just telling us um, the slope of the tangent line to the point x comma f of x on the graph of f. So 
So it's just important to remember what we're doing when we calculate derivatives. Because when I assign you some problems to do, it's going to get really repetitive, just like repeating these rules over and over again, just to like get your practice down with doing that. But there is something that's actually happening. Whenever we find a derivative, we are learning about the behavior of that function at a point. And this function, if we plug in some x, it tells us about the behavior of that function. Um, more specifically, we will end up seeing how the derivative is going to tell us whether or not we're increasing or decreasing. Um, and it should be noted, actually, that I just sort of hinted at um, um, this notion of rates of change. So, so this is kind of a silly notion if you think about it, but I'm still going to write it down. So the derivative, so maybe, should I talk about this right now? Let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to do it. So the derivative of f of x at maybe x equals c tells us the in quotes here instantaneous rate of change at f of c. Okay. So how do we interpret this? Well, like, so imagine we have some function that's telling us maybe meters, like distance, so meters, and this is like your distance. And then on the x-axis, you have maybe t in seconds. So imagine like you're starting from home and you're, you have your car parked at home, you're zero meters away from your home at time t equals zero. And then um, you sort of start driving out of your driveway. So you have like some initial distance that you change. And so maybe after like one second, you've driven like 10 feet or something. So it's like maybe here. And then as time goes on, maybe you hit like a stop sign. But then like maybe you get on the freeway. And then you exit, um, and then you make it to your destination, or something like this. So after maybe, I don't know how many seconds, you make it to your destination, and this is how far away you are from home, right? So the average velocity, so, so, So this is like average is just equal to your change in distance over your change in time. Change in distance over your change in time. So what is that? So this is, you can think of this as like your, here's your last point, here's your first point. That's like saying m2 minus m1 over uh, t1, uh, two minus t1. So that would give you the slope of the line connecting those two points. So this would give you your, so your change in distance divided by your change in time. So like how many meters did you travel over that amount of time? So this would be your average, but you can see like here, you were stopped at a stop sign, right? 
So what would be your velocity here? Your velocity, which is meters over seconds, throughout this whole interval there, you're not changing any distance over that time, so your velocity is zero. But if you look, when you pick any point, like maybe C is there, and then your distance function, I'll call it D at C, evaluated here. So if you look at the derivative here, it's zero, right? So notice that D prime of C is equal to zero. If you look at any tangent line to this to that point, which is C comma DC, it's going to have zero slopes. So the derivative would be zero. So the derivative at this point tells us that we weren't moving right there. Whereas the average velocity would be some positive number, and that would tell us nothing about our motion here. Now, if it were, for example, so here we're on the freeway, right, which we're going faster than we did throughout the whole trip. So if I had like maybe C uh, two or something, and then this would be like the distance function evaluated at D of C two. Notice here we're going faster than the average velocity because if we look at the slope of the tangent line at that point, that's steeper than the average velocity uh, line. So here, um, <clears throat> d prime at c2 would be greater than your velocity average. And that tells you something. It tells you that you were going faster than your average velocity when you got onto the freeway. Okay? So if, like, now, if this was like your own driving, you would obviously know that you're going faster. But if you didn't know anything about, like this could be like a particle moving in space or something, and you just, you, you mark down where it's going, and you get some function that approximates the motion of that particle, then you can learn about the behavior of it by looking at the derivative of different points. Okay, now this also, this doesn't have to just do with, with seconds and distance, so velocity. This could be like, I don't know, um, like maybe um, amount of, of uh, materials versus cost, right? So if you have some like profit that, or loss that, deals with materials being used, you can look at, well, when what materials like make the, the profit change the most in the positive way? Like how do you get, get the steepest gains for that amount of profit? So that's where you'd want to find derivatives that are high or something similar to this type of problem. Okay, so um, let me write down um, another problem here, real fast. So Maybe something like this. So H of S is equal to S to the power five minus and a plus two S plus six over S to the power of one third. And I want you to find h prime of x. Okay. So uh, I'm going to pause the video real fast and let my students try this. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the solution to this. Now, I did this one on purpose. Uh, I gave you this one on purpose because you have this variable in the, the, in the denominator here. And none of these rules apply to any type of division by the variable that you're trying to differentiate with respect to. So probably when you were looking at how to do this, you probably got stuck and you were having to like think about it. So hopefully that like instills in you to always try to simplify the function first before trying before differentiating if it doesn't look like one of these simple forms over here. So here's the solution. So first I'm going to note that h of s, I can rewrite this, this uh, ratio as a sum of ratios. s to the power of 5 over s to the power of 1 half plus 2s over s to the power of 1 half plus 6 over s to the power of one half. And now I can simplify each of these pieces here and get it to where it kind of looks more like maybe a sum of, of, of things like this. So here this would be s to the power 5 minus a half plus 2 times s to the power 1 minus a half. plus six times s to the power negative one half. So let me just simplify this down now. So this would be, um, what is that? Um, nine halves? Yeah, nine halves. Five minus one half. plus two times s to the power negative one half. And then it stays the same, six times s to the power negative one half. Okay. Oh, and then I can combine my terms here. These are both s to the power minus one half. I should have noticed that uh, Yeah, very weird. Yeah, okay. So, um, so then here we have um, s to the power nine and a half plus how many of these do we have? Six, seven, eight, eight s to the one half. Let me make sure that I did this correctly. So one minus that the half zero. Oh, I did make a mistake. I was like, this this wasn't uh, holding up. This is just a half. So these aren't like terms. So now we just apply the constant uh, multiple rule and the uh, exponent rule here. So then you would have, so that's your exponent times the variable, so that would be 9 halves times s to the power um, 9 over 2 minus 1 in the exponent plus one half times two, which is just one, and then s to the power of one half minus one. Let me make sure that y'all can see that. One half minus one. And then here, negative one half times six is negative three s to the power minus one half 
minus one. So nine half minus one is what? Um, uh, five halves. So it'd be nine half times s to the power five over two plus one half minus one is negative one. So this would be one over or negative one half. So this would be one over a half or s to the power of one half. And then this is going to be so negative one half minus one is um, negative three halves. So then this would be um, minus three over s to the power three halves. So that was h, which came to here, and this is when I took h prime. Just, it's, it's always just subtracting one from the exponent. That's what you're doing. <clears throat> so this rule pops up quite a bit. And I think I'm going to um, pause the video again and then show you a really neat application of just this rule right here. So I'm going to pause it, I'm going to erase this, get it nice and clean, and then I'm going to show you something pretty cool about that. Okay, so we're back. So we have briefly touched on the basic differentiation rules for these simple differentiable functions. And I just mentioned that we can use um, this rule here, this, this exponent rule. Um, we can use that to do something interesting immediately without having to go through every step of differentiation. We can immediately talk about this notion of Newton's method. And today we're just going to touch on it a little bit um, because we don't need all the derivative tools to do this. And uh, because this course is designed for data science majors, I want to introduce iterative methods using derivatives as soon as possible. As possible. So our goal is to approximate the square root of two. Now, the square root of two is what's called an irrational number. There's no ratio that represents that number. As a consequence of this, square root of two has an infinite non-repeating decimal approximation, like pi. Like I'm sure you're familiar with how pi is like 3.141. So forth and so on, going on forever, right? Now, with that being said, irrational numbers, we can never hope to store the exact irrational number in a computer, right? A computer has a finite amount of memory, storage, right? How could we ever hold an infinite number, a number, a number that has an infinite number of decimal, non repeating decimal expansions associated with it? A computer just can't. So anytime a computer stores an irrational number, they store some approximation to it. But how do we get that approximation? Well, there's several ways that we can approximate that number. Um, and the way that I'm going to do it is with what's called Newton's method. Um, and I won't write down the name until we derive the correct rules to do this. And we're only going to use this notion of the derivative to do this. OK? So how can we do this? Well, let's look at maybe something like um, so here's the solution, I suppose. And we're going to try to figure it out together. 
We're going to start by letting let um, f of x equal to x squared minus 2. Okay, this is a simple differentiable function, and we can use this rule to find the derivative of that function everywhere. So why did I do this? Well, if I draw a quick picture of it, So this is the parabola that's been dragged down by two units, right? Okay, and it looks something like this. I need to over exaggerate it for the purposes of learning what we're doing. So I'm going to kind of over exaggerate it. That's what the graph of that function looks like. Sort of. Again, I, for learning purposes, I made it kind of fat, but it works. So what are the zeros of this polynomial, of this, of this quadratic? What are the zeros? Recall that a zero is a value for x that if you plug in, the function by was to zero. This function has two of them. Anybody? The square root of two and negatives. Uh, square root. This. Doesn't that equal zero? If you plug in square root of two, that square root is two minus two is zero, right? So here, that value right there, that is x equals to square root of two. And this one happens to be negative uh, square root of two. Those are the two zeros of that function. Now, our goal is that we have no idea what that number is. It's an irrational number, infinite non-repeating decimal expansion. A computer can't store that exact number, <clears throat> but we wish to approximate it. And the hint is that we're going to take a guess. I'll call this guess x0, x0. That point right there is x naught comma f at x naught. That's that point. And I'll give you a hint. We know that this pictorially in intersects the x-axis right there. So if we guessed right here, we guessed kind of far from that. And we, we know that we need to go that way by looking at the picture. But suppose we didn't have a picture and we didn't know where we were at. How could I decide whether to guess a new x over here or over here? And I want my guesses to get closer to the actual answer. How could we do that? I know the function's value here, right? So I have that point. And then I also know that um, f prime of x is what? It's just 2x. So I know the derivative of, the, of this function everywhere as well, right? It's very simple. What does the derivative tell us about, what does it tell us about the function, or the graph of the function? It tells us the what? It's 
Somebody speak up. <laughs> the derivative of f at that point tells us what? The slope of the line tangent to the graph there, right? In particular, it tells us, I'm going to draw the line. There it goes. Wouldn't it be reasonable to say make this x right there equal to our new guess? Isn't it closer? Right? If we originally guessed right here and we want to get close to that zero, right? Isn't it reasonable that if we could figure out where that line hits, x, hits the x-axis, then we can choose that to be our new point. So let's figure out what that point is. I'm, I'm going to say like that value for x right there, I'm going to call that x1. And I want to figure out what x1 is. So what do I, so this is the equation of a line. So the equation of a line passing through uh, a point here with slope m is what it's y2 minus y1 is equal to m times x2 minus x1. So this is the equation of the line passing through two points with slope m. Okay? Now Let's replace these by what they are. So this is like, hmm, maybe I'll use indices like this to make it look nicer. I'm going to use y1 comma y0, or minus y0, and x1 minus x0. It'll line up better with our notation over here. So what are the things that we, we know it, that's a, so this is like our first point, right? And this is our second point, right? So this point here is actually given by x1 comma 0, is that point right there. Like what, the y value is 0. So um, we know what y0 is, and we know what uh, y1 is. So y1 here is 0. And then our previous y was just f evaluated at x0. And what's the slope of this line? Someone say it out loud. What's the slope of this green line right here? It's not a numerical answer. It's like, what tells us the slope of this green line? Anybody? I've said it, I don't know how many times <laughs> today. The derivative at a point tells you what? The slope of the line tangent at that point. So the, deriv the, the slope here is just the derivative evaluated at x0. And then here, the x's can stay the same. So for this problem here, I'm going to underline what we know. We know what that is because we can just plug in any x0 into f, right? 
We know what this is because we know the derivative of the function everywhere. It's just 2x. And um, we know what this is because we just guess that number is our first guess at what the, the zero of that function is. So then the only thing that we don't know is x1. And that's what we're trying to guess. That, that we want that to be our next guess. So we just have to solve for x1 to figure out if I put in a guess, I, I want a new answer. So if I divide both sides by f priming it, And if I add x0 to both sides, I isolate x1. I get x1 is equal to x0 minus this quantity here. So if this is my first guess, my next guess will be given according to this equation here. And if I use, if I do this again, so if I guess, so this would be my new guess right there, right? So if I pick this value, I evaluate all that stuff, I get my new guess, it's right here. But then I do the same thing. And I get a new point there. And then I can, I can find the equation of this line. And right here, this would be my x2 comma 0. So I get a, I, if I put in x0, I get out an x1. If I have an x1, then I get an x2. And the, the x2, you figure out the same way here. So it looked like this. So then with my x2, I have another point. I could evaluate it like right there. And then I have another line. And then that would be like my x3 on zero. So in general, the equation is x n plus 1 is equal to x n minus f of x n all over the derivative at x n. So in a kind of um, not very detailed way, and we will talk about the details at some point, iterating, so taking an initial guess, x0, and then iterating this process is known as Newton's method. Uh, for finding zeros of the function. Note that it's not always going to find zeros, but for this particular function, x squared minus 2, it will. Now, it's not, it might not find them precisely, but it will, it will converge to them. It will, if you iterate it a thousand times, you're going to get incredibly close. So, 
So that's what we're going to do. Because, and this is a very simple function. All we need to know is the derivative, which we do everywhere. We take a guess a little bit bigger than square root of two, and then we just iterate until we get close enough that we're satisfied. This is what's known as an iterative method. You take a guess, and then you update your guess. You take a guess, you update your guess. Take a guess, update your guess. And with regards to machine learning and deep learning, uh, this is what people do. Uh, this is a very, very simplified version of it, but the, it's essentially the same. You make a guess at some weights that scale some answer that you want, and then you update your weights according to using the derivative. So notice that we're finding the zero here. We're finding the zero. We, get, we, we did bad and we fixed it. We did bad and we fixed it. We did bad and we fixed it. If you look up machine learning, that's kind of what it is. You do bad and you fix it. You do bad and you fix it. So we guessed that the answer was here. And then if we just iterate this process, it will learn better and better answers. Okay. And of course, there's going to be a stopping criteria. Like you don't want to run this forever. You'd probably run it, you picked right here, you'd probably run it like, uh, 20 times, 50 times. Or you could set a tolerance and say that when, um, um, when f at this value is close enough to zero, you can just stop. And then that's the whole point. You're finding zeros, which give you the, the approximation of the square root of two. Does that make sense? Like, does it kind of feel like learning, like machine learning? Not, not, not that you know what machine learning is, really, but if you think about it, we gave it an arbitrary guess, and then we just apply this a bunch of times, and it starts spitting out better answers. Right? OK, so I'm going to pause the video now and um, pull up a, uh, um, a Python IDE to kind of walk through this. OK, so let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, so I went into Anaconda. I opened up Spider. And then in my folder, I just made a new script here, a Python script called my first script, all underscore with a dot .py extension. OK. So um, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, I'm not. I was not planning on doing this, but maybe we'll do some plotting, maybe. So, um, so import um, max plot library dot py plot. This is for plotting. Again, if you're not familiar, so we're importing this package as plt. I think that's the only thing that we'll need. So again, our goal is to find the square root of two, um, or approximate it. So, uh, so maybe I'll use like strings in this little script, and I can do three here, and then do three down here. So I'm just going to give a description of what we're doing here, just so. So there's a problem. And this is just strings. It, it doesn't do anything to the program. It's just for you to read. Um, we want to approximate um, the square root of 2 somehow. And, and the way that we're going to do this is we're going to say, and again, for those of you not familiar with Python, this is just um, text. It, or a string that won't affect how the program runs is just for you to read. So I'm going to say let f of x. So we define this thing to be equal to uh, x squared minus 2. The solutions here are the, the zeros of f of x 
will approximate square root of two. Okay, um, so the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna make an initial guess. So I guess this is like Newton's method. So we take a x zero maybe as a guess to the correct answer. So when I say that, I mean that we're, we, we, we pick a value for x and then we just like evaluate f at that and that's our first approximate zero. So it's like a two part step here. So this is like part one, you make a guess. And then part two, um, we say that X of, um, so like N plus one is equal to our old guess, X of N minus f at x of n divided by uh, f prime of x n. Okay, so like in general, um, like this, this is Newton's method. So we have a guess. And then as soon as we get a guess, we can evaluate this and then we get a new guess. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say, I'm going to define um, F. So I can say to define a function in Python, you type function. Oh no, sorry, def. Sorry, I had it right the first time. Def. And I'm going to say F of X. And then this function is going to return x squared minus two. So in um, Python, you would do x double stars two, so that's x squared, and then minus two. And then we can define a function for the derivative because we know the derivative. So we can do def again, df I'll call it, which takes in number x, and then returns uh, 2x, or return 2 times x. Oh, that should be a 2. So the, der the derivative of this function is 2x. So we know that everywhere. So I'm going to say, like, let's look at, like, say, x not is equal to, let's make our first guess to be like six, <laughs> all right? So then if we update according to this formula, we'll have x one is equal to like our old value. So x zero minus f of x zero divided by df of x zero. <clears throat> All I did was just like, I defined my functions, I made a guess, and then I update. So actually I'll put in strings here so you can like, or some text so you can see what's going on. So this would be our initial guess. And then this would be like our first update. And then I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. So copy. Okay. And then just paste it right here. And then this would be our second update. So 
But now we need to make an X2. So I replace X1 by X2, and then all these X0s by X1. Okay. Um, maybe I'll do one more update. So I'm just going to copy that, come down here, paste. I'll do a third update. So then here we have three, and then wherever you see a one, we place a two. Okay, so this is just like iterating this rule that many times and that rule we just showed came from how the derivative is going to work with this function. So I'm just going to click this little play button up here. And now we ran it. And if I look at my variable explorer, I see that my my initial x is there. Here's my um, next guess. Here's my next guess. Here's my next guess. So if I just look at like, and by the way, um, when I ran this, these functions should be imported in my console. So I can do f of x zero was 34. f of x one was this. f of x two was that. f of x three. Is that? So we can, so what was the goal of Newton's method it, or in this, for this problem, it was that we wanted to find the zeros of F. And we started on the positive side where we know that we were to the right of the zero. And we took a guess and we were really far off from being zero. We took a guess, we got closer to zero. We took another guess, we got closer. We took another guess, we got closer. So let me go ahead and make a fourth update. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste the fourth. But now I got to like make a new, ver new uh, there. So X4 is now this three. Three, three. So now let's uh, let's try let's run that. Okay. So then let's look at f of x four. Oh, it's even closer to zero. Do you see that? And what is x four? It's one point four one five so forth and so on, right? Um, let's see. What does Google say it is? 1.41421, we have 1.4155. Uh, let's see if we can get closer to this. So uh, you can probably guess what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna make an, another update. Um, and because this, there's no, um, we're not assuming any programming background in this course, I'm not going to write a loop immediately. I would normally loop this, it's much easier instead of doing it by hand, sort of. But let me just show you this way first, so you can at least like, see this one step at a time. All right, so now, so what's my X5? 1.142, that looks closer, right? That's kind of cool. Um, so maybe what we can, we can do now is say, suppose I want to like plot this thing, this function F, right? So I can come down here and do plt dot plot. Um, I need to provide it 
a bunch of X's. Uh, uh, I don't know if I want to do that. Let me see real fast. One second. Let me just try something real fast. I'm going to import another library called NumPy. It's a numerical library. And I'm importing that as MP. So MP is going to give me access to everything. And basically, in Python, in order to plot, you need to make a, a collection of domain elements for your function. So I'm going to say, like, P is equal to, and you don't need to know anything about what this is, MP dot, um, say, um, what is it called? Uh, Lin space? I think it's what it's called. Yeah. And then I'm going to plot from like negative six to positive six. Seven, maybe. So let me just try this real fast. I'm not sure if it's going to work. D and then F of D. Probably not going to work. Let me just see. No, there it goes. So um, let me just. I'm going to make this nice for you now. This from what I, from now on, what I'm doing, I don't expect at all for you to understand because plotting takes a while to learn in Python. But you can at least follow along and watch um, a, a video, watch this YouTube video later to get a sense of how to do this. So now I'm going to do plt dot, um, I think it's called grid. Make the grid pop out. Let me see. All right, so then we can see the y axis right here. I mean, the x axis is zero. And here's the y axis, and we see. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll make it a little bit closer. I'll say um, from negative one to maybe two, no, no, three. So here, right there, that's where we were trying to find right there, right? So now I'm gonna make my initial guess equal to Three. Let me just see. <clears throat> All right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to like show you what's happening here. So maybe I can do like um, dot scatter. Let's see if this works. X zero. So the way that plot and scatter work is you provided a domain and you provided uh, y, y elements after that. So that's all I'm doing right now. So I'm providing that one guess and then I'm going to see if it'll do this for me. F at that one guess. Let's see if that... And then I'm make it colored red. And again, this is kind of a very slow way of doing it, but I think it would be probably the easiest for you to go back and understand opposed to me doing it in a fancy way. All right, there's a little red dot right there. Okay, so now I'm just going to make this a little bit better by saying x1, comma, x2, comma, x3, comma, x4, comma x5. That's we went five times. So now that's my domain. And now um, I'm going to uh, for the y values, I'm just going to take this copy. So 
FFX1, FFX2, FFX3, I gotta do this two more times, FFX4, and then finally FFX5. All right, so if I just want to run that. So you see that they're starting to like jumble up over here. So now I'm going to get even closer. I'm going to say that I'm going to make my domain from one to three so we can really see what's going on down there. So here we go. This is our first guess at x equals to three. It gave us the function's value there. And then our new guess was like right here right there and then that was the function's value there and then our new guess was right here and then our function's value was there and so forth and so on we did that five times and then after doing it five times the guess that we came up with was that which is fairly close to what you would see on um like any like google search that you do okay so for those of you that are more interested in a, a a more um, standard way of doing this instead of doing this one by one by one you can do a loop uh, i think i'll make like a short 15 20 minute video on plotting this appropriately um, using python if you want to just kind of mimic what i'm doing okay all right so i'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now and then uh, i can take some questions